All right, so looking at our word problem of the day today, it says, what is the volume of the right rectangular prism? All right, so what are we, what's important in our question? Abby. Okay, so the whole thing. All right, and then what else is important in this question? Sophia? Volume. Why is volume important? All right, and then Sophia, what is the formula to find the volume? All right, so looking at our numbers, we have 12, six and a half, six and a half. How many of you guys cut them as a fraction? Okay, how many of you guys change it to decimals? All right, so I'm going to do the decimal way because as you guys know, I do not like fractions. Um, but if somebody wants to show their fraction way that did it as fractions, I don't have a problem with that either. All right, so we are going to start out with doing 12 times six and a half. So I did my math wrong, as usual. It's too early. That's why you have a calculator. All right, so your answer should be 507. Okay? How many of you guys got 507? All right, is there anybody who did it the fraction way that would just like to bring their tool down up just so we can see that version? You don't have to explain it anymore, I just want to say it. All right, and then if you did it using fractions, here is your other way. You should get 2028 over 4, divide that, you get 507. Okay? All right, so remember on the back of your word problem, um, top, middle, bottom, circle one, and then write your name. All right, put that to the side. All right, if you have not copied down the title for your notebook pages today, please do so. And then you should have two pieces of paper that I passed out to you. You should not have one, but you should have two. Raise your hand if you're missing anybody from your group today. So for our notes today, you can have you can either use like a different color pen or you can use a highlighter. Um, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Okay, how many of you guys have ever heard of GCF or LCF? Okay, you learned this in fourth grade. Um, you learned it, uh, talked about it a little bit more last year in fifth grade, and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit more in sixth grade. We are going to go through these notes, we're going to do some practice problems, and then you're going to do some independent practice problems which are going to be collected as a grade. All right, 
<clears throat> so, um, your essential question is how can I apply GCF and LCM to solve real world problems? That's where we are getting by the end of um, today. So when you're finding the GCF or the greatest common factor, you're looking for the largest factor for two or more numbers. Now, this word right here, what does that mean? What does factor mean? Um, factor, means, wait, factor means something that makes up a multiple equation. No. Yes. Yeah, so it's two numbers that are multiplied. You can only ever multiply two numbers at a time. So if I give you the number 10, what are two numbers that we can multiply together to get 10? Gabby? Two and five. Two and five. What are two numbers, two other numbers, that I can multiply together to get 10? Lily? One and ten. Those are factors. So two numbers multiplied to give you one number. Okay? Um, it is important to know the GCF when simplifying fractions or dividing. So again, these are very important things. You also use it with distributive property. Finding a number that goes into both of the numbers or all three of the numbers on the inside of your parentheses, that's also when you use GCF. All right, so steps to finding the greatest common factor or you'll hear me call it GCF all day long. Um, the first thing you need to do is look the factors of both numbers using a T-chart or a list. We call it tall T's. We use tall T's. We put a number on top, you draw a T, and then you have your factors on each side. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but again, you are going to hear me refer to it as a tall T. Um, but the important thing is listing the factors. You must list all of the factors. If you miss one factor, more than likely that's probably the factor you need to, to be your greatest common factor. Now we're gonna identify the common factors, which is step number two, and then we are going to circle the greatest of those common factors. Um, and again, common factors, make sure you find all of them. They say underline them, we're probably just going to circle them and then use a different color for the GCF. Um, so, we are finding the GCF of 24 and 36. So 24 goes on this side, 36 goes on this side. This is your tall T. And also when you're doing factors, you can use a factor rainbow, which I'm going to show you as well. I don't like the factor rainbow because I'm not neat enough to do the factor rainbow, but again, preference of what you you like to do um, and we always go from the least number to the greatest number what that means is the very first factor you're going to write is 1 times the number so for here we're doing 1 times 24 stop clicking stop and do what we're supposed to be doing son why are you why have you not written this Um, so you always start with one, and then you say, okay, can I multiply this number by two and get the answer? Or not multiply this number, can I multiply something by two to get the answer? So 24, why can I multiply by two to get 24 in DR? 12. So the next one is going to be two and 12, or two times 12. All right, so three, can I multiply a number times three to get 24? And you can say yes to all of this, but what does it have to be? What does it have to do? Like, why does 1 times 24 work? Why does 2 times 12 work? Is it both? Has to equal 24, but can I multiply by a fraction of something and get 24? 
has to be a whole number. Cannot have a remainder, cannot be a fraction, cannot be a decimal. So it's got to be whole numbers. All right, so what times 3 gives me 24? Isabella? What times 4 gives me 24? Brio? 6. All right, what times 5 gives me 24? Why? Why doesn't 5 work? Joe? 5 doesn't work because 5 times 4 equals 20, and then 5 times 5 is equal to 25. Right. So it'd be 1 off. Right, so it doesn't go in evenly. So if a number does not go in evenly, um, that is how you know that it doesn't work. Another way, especially when we get to bigger numbers, um, I tell my students, go ahead and divide. So if it's like, let's say it's 412, and we're trying to figure out if 6 will work, you would divide 412 divided by 6. If you have no remainder, then it works. If you have a remainder, it does not work. All right, so 5 doesn't work, and then we know 6 times 4, so we're starting to repeat. So we're done with the factors for 24. Does that make sense? You don't need to write 6 times 4, 8 times 3, 12. You don't need to write anymore because that's just repeating. All right, so let's slide over to 36. So we start with 1 times 36. All right, what about 2? Can I multiply something by 2 to get 36? Andrew? All right, can I multiply something by 3 to get 36? Elizabeth? Never mind. Kira? 3 times 12. Can I multiply 4 by something to get 36? Pam? 9. Can I multiply 5 by something to get 36? Okay, why not? Really? Because um, if you had tried to divide, uh, Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Why does it not work? Because it's, uh, you would have a remainder. Right, it doesn't go in evenly. All right, and then six. What times six will give me 36? Callie? Mm -hmm. All right, and then seven. Does seven work? What about eight? No, nope. and then we start repeating with nine, right? So those are the factors. Now, this is where your two colors are gonna come in. I don't care which one you use. Um, we are going to circle all the ones that are the same. So we're looking at the common factors now. So two and two. What's another common factor that you see? Joe? Three. So three and three. Soraya? Twelve. Twelve? Okay. All right, what's another one? Caitlin, what's another one that's the same? The last one that is the same. Ariana? Six. Six. All right, so uh, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, which one is the greatest? Which one is the greatest? Alex? 12. All right, so 12 is actually going to be our GCF. And that is how you do GCF. Okay? Questions. All right, so that is the tall T. Now, the factor rainbow takes a great deal of ability for spatial awareness, which I don't have very much, um, just being honest. Um, you have to be extremely neat, and you have to know your factors very, 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 very well. So this is gonna be a little bit easier because we already have our factors here, um, but usually, you would do 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. So like, you have to know like first number to last number, second number to second to last number. And then this is where your factor rainbow comes in. So then you draw your little connection to each one of your factors, and this means multiply. 
So this is your factor rainbow. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing with 36. So 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and then 6 times 6. Those are factor rainbows. Again, I don't like them because they're super messy. I don't care how neat you are. Like, and if you miss one, then you have to erase all the numbers and go. It's just, but if that's what you like, if you want to do it that way, I'm never against anything that makes more sense to you than something else, right? So do whichever one you feel most comfortable with. You can either use qualities or you can use factor rainbows. All right, questions about GCF. You guys kind of remember this a little bit? Teeny tiny a little bit? Okay. All right, so go to the next paper. And I apologize, I was not paying attention when I made copies. That's why we have two sheets instead of one little one. Um, all right, so least common multiple. This is the smallest multiple that two numbers have in common. So multiples are different than factors. All right, multiples essentially is um, you can do skip counting or repeated addition. So we're just gonna say repeated addition, bless you. And you'll understand, uh, bless you. When we go through this, you'll understand why. So you have multiples when you skip count. So that's where that skip counting comes from. Skip counting, so um, if I'm asking for the first five multiples of two, so the first multiple is two, what's the next multiple? Four. What's the next one? Two. What's the next one? Eight. What's the next one? Seven. That is finding multiples, okay? What about eight? So what's the first five for eight? So eight, you wanna go, Mom? What's the next one? 16. 24. 36. 36. Okay. We just get the whole number. Oh, 36, no. what, what's eight times five? No. Now y'all got me all messed up. I messed up. I have 32. 30, I was gonna say, wait a minute. So 32. 40. 40, okay. Um, but again, that's finding multiples. So it's just skip counting. It's just adding that number to the previous number. Um, it is important to know the LCM when you need common denominators, equivalent fractions, or you're doing something with repeated addition. Um, so I kind of get you the relevance of why we need to know LCM and GCF. Um, we'll use it mostly when we're dealing with equivalent fractions because we don't deal with common, denom common denominators too much. Um, so the steps to finding LCM. Number one, you must list the first five multiples. The reason we say the first five multiples is because you could go through um, your top number and list 20 numbers and then go through your second number and have to list 45. I mean, like, it's just do five at a time. It's a little less tedious than, um, than trying to do them all at once. And then you're looking for the common multiple, so if there is not a common multiple in the first five, keep listing multiples until you find one. So this is really important. You do not stop after the first five. So, but like I said, do five at a time to break it down and not make it as overwhelming. Um, and then circle the LCM and make sure it is the lowest number they have in common. Now, um, your lowest number might not necessarily be the smallest number. Like, it might happen that you have two numbers and these numbers are fairly large and your LCM is 216. So don't get caught up in the fact that the number is not necessarily a small number because we think of lowest 
We think of what? We think of small. So please do not be like, but that's not right, even though it's actually the right one, because you're thinking, well, it's not the smallest number. We're not asking for the smallest number. We're asking for the least common multiple, okay? All right, let's go ahead and do an example here. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so no. Here we do a sideways T, or they used to call it the bus or, or whatever, but I call it the sideways T. So with the GCF, you have the tall T, with the LCM, you have the sideways T. All right, so step number one. Um, we're going to list the first five multiples for each one of these. So 12, you always start with that number. Because 12 times 1 equals what? 12 times 1 equals 1, or equals 12. I always write the times across the top because that is also going to help you answer questions. So you're going to need those little numbers and you're going to need to understand, okay, well, it was actually the fifth day or the third day or the twelfth day or whatever day. All right, so 12 times 2 is what? 24. 12 times 3? No. Yes. No. No. 36. 12 times 4? Is about 48 and 12 times 5. Callie? 60. So I am stopping there. Why? Why am I stopping right here? Levy? Why did I stop after 5? I don't know. You said we would do 5. Right, because that's kind of like the, the way you do it. You stop after 5. Now let's do 18. So twelve or 18 times 1 gives you. Just go ahead and call it 18. 12 times 2? 36. 12 times 3? Or I'm sorry, why was I saying 12? 18 times 3. Me too. 54. 54. Now, I'm going to stop. Why am I going to stop? Ramon? Because you already have a multiple. Right, I already have my least common multiple. There's no reason for us to keep going, right? So, your least common multiple is going to be 36, okay? All right, questions? None? All right, I want you to keep these papers out because you're going to need them for what we're doing next. So slide over to your GCF LCM practice problems. All right, so we're going to do a couple of problems each of LCM and of GCF. So for your GCF one, <coughs> you're finding the GCF of 36 and 63. So what is the process in which we need to set this up? We're finding the GCF of 36 and 63. All right, so I'm going to call T. We'll put 36 on the left, 63 on the right. All right, so far so good. Do you have a question? Okay, I just want to make sure. All right, what do we do next? So we gotta find the factors. All right, so we're gonna do one times 36. What comes next? Bryson? Two times 18. What comes next? Willie? Three times 12. Three times 12. What comes next? Oh my God, the sun is out. Sorry. Abby? Four times nine. Four times nine. And what's the last one? Here? Six times six. All right. That one's pretty easy. 63. It's a little bit bigger. You got to know 
your multiplication facts. Like you have to, because this is where that comes in extremely handy. So again, we're starting with one times 63. Does two work? Well, I think it does. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be like, mm, I think it works. So I'm gonna do 63 divided by two because two goes into everything. You can multiply two by anything to get your answer. So that's gonna be three, six. Oh, so I was wrong because it's not going to work. Why is it not gonna work? I'm going to essentially have a remainder, so I'm going to have 31 and a half. So that does not work. So did you see how I wasn't sure, but I, I was fairly confident. I was like, yeah, I'm smart today. Um, and I used division to help me figure out that I wasn't as smart as I thought it was, right? Use division if you are not sure about a number. All right, three times what? Three times what? 21. What about four? Four work. So if I do four, it's going to go in one time, bring it down, it's going to be 23. Does four go into 23? Yes or no? No. So therefore, four is not going to work. What about five? Does five work? Why not? Perfect. Fives are really easy. If it doesn't end in a five or a zero, then you know that it's not. Yes? Nine. Hold on, we're not there yet. Don't skip. And see how you jump straight to nine? I know that nine is a factor, but when we do that, and this is why I go in order, because you are going to miss a number. And that, like I said, excuse me, is probably going to be the number that is actually usually your GCF. So you are 100% correct, but we're not there yet. Okay? All right, so five and zero, uh, or it doesn't end in a five and zero, so I know that it's not going to be five. What about six? Why? It's got a six and a three. That goes into both of those. And I end up with a. Okay. All right, so six doesn't work. What about seven? Seven's got to work. Seven has to work. Okay, what is it? Nine. All right. What about eight? Eight's got to work too, isn't it? Because um, don't you do eight times eight? No, it's not. No. Sixty-four. Are you sure? Yes. You went up. Do the math. I eight eight times. You get sixty-four. I believe y'all today. Tomorrow, Monday. Not so much. All right. So yes, eight times eight is actually sixty-four. But again, see how confident you are, and you're like, yeah, I know it's gonna work. And then you're like, oh, that's not right. Okay. So again. We are very smart, but don't over-smart yourself. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, all right, and then we're going to start repeating, so we're done. So let's identify our common factors. And you never include one, also. You don't ever include one. So three. All right, what else? Kira? No. Okay, anything else? All right, and then what is our greatest common factor? What was it? Nine. Nine. All right, so then our GCF equals nine. All right, next one. You guys are doing, um, I want you to do it as a group. So you have 12 and 28, and you're finding the GCF. So stand up as a group when you have your um, answer. Remember, you're working as a group. Bless you.
Factors for 12. works. You guys, thumbs up if you agree. What are your common factors? Andrew? And what is your GCF? Okay. How do we feel about it? Finding the GCF at 56 and 84. Again, we'll work as a group. Stand up when you have your answer.
I mean, technically, you're, if you're doing it in order, you're saying, okay, three doesn't work, four works, five doesn't work, six works, seven doesn't work, oh, seven does work. So, I mean, technically, you're getting to seven. So, just go in the order of, like, one to nine. All right, so I'm going to put y'all out of your misery. Because this is why it is so, 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 so very important to not be SMRT, but to be SM. ART and do a little bit of extra work because as I'm walking around, um, it's very, very evident that we are skipping something. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead. What are our factors for 56? Bryson. Okay. 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 Thumbs up if we agree. All right, factors for 84. So obviously, we know that it is one times 84. We know that it is two times 42. But did we know that it is three times 28? Because if you didn't know that, and you didn't know that, so don't shake your head like you knew that. Let's figure it out after. You, yes, but what happens if we don't, so we're gonna circle this one and act like it's not there. So we're gonna keep going. So go ahead, give me the rest of the factors. Isabel. Four times and then I think I like some other but we stopped at 14 and 6 Yeah. All right, so they stopped because they saw 28, but you need to make sure that you try to get all of those. So again, we're not looking at 28. We don't see 28 right now because a lot of us did not do 28. <coughs> we're gonna find our common factors. What are my common factors without 28 in there? Addison. So what happens now if you don't do 28? Real. You don't get your actual GCF. Right, you do not get the GCF if you skip the factors of three times 28, okay? And it's not because you don't know, but three is one of those numbers where you're like, eh, it doesn't go into much. But you still have to try, okay? The GCF of this problem is 28. Be careful, children.
All right, so now we're going to shift over to LCM questions. All right, so the next couple are gonna be LCM. And when you're doing LCM, make sure you're using that sideways T. So we're gonna start off nice and pretty. We're gonna do two and 15. So two, on the sideways T, 15. What do we, how do we solve for, for LCM again? I forgot, so when we did our sideways T, then what do we do? What do we do? Uh, Elizabeth? We use the first number, well, the whole number, which is 2 times 1. Just read step number 2. Okay. Um, look at common multiples if there is not a common multiple on the first five cube listing multiples. Got it. Look at step 1. Okay. List the first five multiples to start with. All right. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. ten. Times one, times two, times three, times four, times five. All right. What are you about to notice? What are you about to notice? Yes. So if we stop right here, and I wrote the first multiple for fifteen. My 10 is still below it, so yep. I'm not even going to stop at this point. I'm just going to keep going. And I'm going to do 12, 14, 16. I'm going to skip about 12, and I'm going to do 30. Why am I stopping at 30, even though you can't see that? Why am I stopping at 30? Obviously, don't ever do this, but why did I stop at 30? Sophia? Because 30 is a multiple of 15, so 15 times <coughs> 1 is 15, 15 times 2 is 30. So my LCM is going to be 30. There is a trick, and I'm always very hesitant to, to show you this trick, because you do need to also understand, again, that these numbers right here will have meanings in your word problems. So you need to understand what you're doing there. But what trick do you think you can use? Or what trick did you guys learn possibly? Gabby? But you can always multiply the, um, if you like you have like a long list of like one part, let's see, see if there's two and 15. If it's like two, if it doesn't go to 15, that two times 15 is gonna be your LCM. Right, so you can multiply your LCM numbers together. Um, doesn't obviously work if you have three numbers because obviously you can't multiply three numbers together. Um, but I caution you. I caution you because not every LCM question is going to be that straightforward. Okay? Alright, so let's do another one with LCM because y'all would just love me. Because these are not nice numbers. So 6 and 21. All right, so as a group, go ahead and get your least common multiple. up when you have your answer. 
Y'all should be working as a group. I should not see people doing anything other than working together. Sitting doing nothing is not working together. Because they're not going to be sitting there with you when you're doing this by yourself, right? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and go over this one. So the first five multiples of six. So we have six, 12, 18, 24, 30. Y'all agree? Yes. Okay. So then I'm going to do 21, 42, was it 63? I'm going to stop right there because... Clearly, I don't need to keep going with my bottom numbers because my top numbers are so much smaller right now. So I'm going to do another five. I'm going to do 36, 42, 48, 54, 1, 2, 3, 4, can't count, 60. All right, have I found a common multiple? All right, Lily, what is it? It is 42. 42. Now, Lily, what did we notice in your group? Uh, when you take head, I think it's over 42 if you're doing it. Um, and probably was of 84. 84. So if you keep going, you end up with 84 somewhere over here and 84, what is it, the next one? Yeah. 84 here. This is also a common multiple between these two. And if you're not careful, you're going to say that the LCM for this problem is what? 84. So just look at all of your numbers. If you want to find the common multiples for LCM, you can definitely do that as well, and then find the one that is the lowest. But our answer for this one, our LCM is 42. All right, I'm going to be a little bit nicer to you. What? We're going to slide this one in. I already wrote it on the back page of mine. So like um, we are going to slide this one in right here. So we're going to do 40. Do not do this, by the way. Go to the next page. The only reason I'm not going to the next page is because I already wrote the title off. Don't, if you don't have room on your paper, please don't do this. Okay. I just had like a math teacher heart attack. Um, all right. So you're doing 40 and 60. Now, see ya. Go. <laughs>
and 60. Fairly big numbers, but actually it's not that hard, is it? All right, so what are my first four or five multiples for 40? Isabella. All right, Isabella, what are my first five multiples for 60? Can I stop right there? Why can I stop right there? You can see that we already have our LCM, which is 120. All right, how do you uh, <laughs> excuse me? How do you guys feel about LCM GCM? Okay, it's not terribly hard like this. It's about to get hard because we are putting in two word problems. That is what I just passed out to you. So go ahead and if you have not turned your page. Um, go ahead, turn your page, and write at the top, GCF LCM classwork. Um, originally, I was going to have you do this independently, but I actually think I'm going to have you work in your groups. Um, just to, a bit, you guys are doing a good job with your groups today, please don't ruin it. All right. <clears throat> when you are dealing with GCF LCM questions, you are looking for key words that essentially help you figure out if you're doing GCF, if you're doing LCM. Um, so like for number one, obviously these are all word problems too. What do you need to do? Annotating. Annotating. So number one says Dan rides his bike to town every eighth day. So ride or walks to the town every third day. On which day? Are they likely to meet in town? So does this say anything about greatest? No. Does it say anything about factors? No. No. So the fact that it doesn't have those two words means this is an LCM question. So you need to label this LCM. We are then going to go through and annotate this very quickly. So Dan rides um, his bike to town every eighth day. So walks to town every third day, and we need to find out on which days are they likely to meet in town. So, you obviously do not have enough room to do your work on this page for a reason. You are going to do your work on this page. This is number one. This is an LCM question. What two numbers am I using based off of my word problem? Okay. Eight and three. So I'm going to put three at the top, I'm going to put eight at the bottom. And I'm going to find my multiples. So it's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. I'm going to do eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, forty. <coughs> I need to keep going with my three, so I'm going to do 18, 21, 24. Can I stop? Why can I stop? In the air? Say it again. Because there's 24 right here. All right, so my answer for this would be um, every 24 day they would be going to town at the same time. 
So now this is where it gets hard because you're putting it into context. All right, not just finding, here's two numbers, find the LCM. Here's two numbers, find the GCF. Questions about number one? So I think it's this, or are we now back to this? All right. I'm not doing number two with you, but I am going to go through and annotate number two with you guys. Can you please stop, child? Put it all away. All right, so number two, it says um, 32 of the 96, 32 of 96 of the parents in the PTA wanted a quick bake sale instead of a car wash. What is the greatest common factor that you could use to simplify this fraction? Okay, so obviously this one's a little bit more straightforward, isn't it? All right, we know that we're looking for that fraction that we're gonna be dealing with. Um, we also know what is the greatest common factor that could be used to simplify the fraction? It tells us right here, we are finding what? It tells us right there in our word problem, what are we finding? Sorry? GCF. What numbers are we using? Because it doesn't come straight out and tell us, does it, Isabel? 32 and 96. So that's what you're using for number two. All right, at this point, you are working with your group? Yeah. Go ahead, and um, you should get these questions done uh, by the end of the class today. Um, you need to make sure you have your name on them. Make sure that you have it annotated. Your answers can go in here. Your work goes in your notebook. Turn it into the bed when you're finished.